Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking all about nutrition. Recently, I have had literally the exact same conversation related to nutrition with three totally separate people um, who are coming from very different places with their you know, approach to food. And I just felt really inspired or really called really to talk about this subject here on my channel. This isn't necessarily anything new, but I feel like it's been a long time since I've just kind of sat down and been like, let's get into the nitty gritty of nutrition. If you guys are new around here, um, welcome. First off, my name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian and I'm obviously very pas passionate about nutrition, very passionate about educating on nutrition in a way that is not only easy to understand, but um, easily applicable, meaning it actually makes sense. Um, it's not something that's gonna be really restrictive and cause you stress. It's actually going to improve your health, improve your nourishment, um, but without it being this really difficult, stressful, um, like diet type um, approach. I honestly have no idea what I'm going to call this video, maybe like nutrition chat or something. I'm literally just standing in my kitchen right now. I've got um, my iced latte and I just wanted to chat with you guys, basically just like how I had this almost identical conversation with again three separate people so it's just so clear to me that this and i already know this but um it's so clear to me that this specific topic i'm going to speak on is so important um it is so crucial to healthy eating and it really applies to you no matter who you are what you like to eat what you struggle with food wise it really is just based on our human biology and i am such a huge um proponent, I guess you would say, of not only like credible, proper nutrition education, but tying it back to how our body actually works. Because when you can understand how your body works and how food fits into that puzzle and how food actually fuels you, you understand it all so much better and you don't really need to rely on a ton of external um, plans or approaches or a diet or anything like that because you already have a baseline knowledge how to fuel your body and then when you can tune into like your own intuitive cues then you are just like off to the races. Now I just want to say if you find this video helpful, if you are able to walk away with some new knowledge or a new perspective on things, I would absolutely love for you to share this video with a friend or family member that you think would benefit because um, it really helps me to kind of get this word out and cut through the noise of dieting and really just help people to not have to rely on all of that stressful stuff and not be so um, like such a not a slave but not be so dependent on like the next diet trend the next um, you know whether it's like the carnivore diet or keto I mean like it's just like it, it's non-stop and when you can actually like understand the basis of food, the basis of biology, you become so much more independent, you become so much more competent, and you really can not only enjoy food a lot more, but you can actually nourish yourself so much better. Okay, so let's start with what I consider to be like the three main principles of healthy eating. When you really boil it down, and there's so much that goes into food and nutrition and biology and all that, but when you really boil it down, there are three things. So there is your biological need for fuel, there is your dependence on nutrients, and then there's also the satisfaction factor. Now, when you let dieting come into your life or your mindset, and when I mean dieting, it could be literally like a quintessential diet like Weight Watchers, which now they're calling it not a diet, but it's definitely a diet. Um, or it could be, you know, like a framework for eating. Like for example, one of the, the person, the, one of the people I chatted with was trying the carnivore diet. And um, I'm not knocking the carnivore diet. Like I am, um, he was experimenting with it and he was kind of using it to, um, improve his diet overall and like give him kind of something to work from and he realized how much better he felt however he was still running into a lot of these mental blocks of like well i'm hungry but i'm not allowed to eat and bread is bad and this is bad and it's like okay this this helped to a point but you can't continue with that always without it having some negative impacts as far as stress goes um, and possibly even negative nutrition impacts depending on the diet, how much we're cutting out and what we're talking about. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick second to tell you about my nutrition and intuitive eating program, Mindful Eating Made Simple. 
This program is all of my knowledge, education, tips, expertise, experience, all in one place where I teach you everything you need to know about not just nutrition, but also how to eat in a way that is healthy and balanced for the lifelong. I am a firm believer that you need to be equipped both with robust nutrition knowledge that makes sense, that can be applied to your daily life, but also understanding how to eat intuitively because I believe that that is the only way to enjoy eating but not go overboard and be able to maintain health and vitality through your lifetime. So if you are just done with being on a cycle of dieting and trying this diet and that diet and failing and trying again and all of that nonsense, or maybe you're just trying to eat healthy, but you find nutrition confusing or you find it stressful and you feel like you kind of end up turning it into a diet in itself and you just can't do it in a way that is relaxed and sustainable and balanced, then this program is for you. I will personally be here to hold your hand and walk you through as you build on this new knowledge and make these changes. My mission is to help women feel confident with healthy eating, but without the complex. And that is exactly what I do in this program. So I will leave a link down below if you are ready to join me inside the program and maybe you're still on the fence. And if that's the case, I would highly recommend taking my free mindful eating mindset masterclass where you are going to start to learn how to break down that diet mentality, how to eat healthy for the long term in a way that's balanced and sustainable, and also avoid some of the most common mistakes people make when it comes to healthy eating. If this sounds like something you are needing in your life, I so hope to see you inside the program. I want to help you make the changes that are actually going to give you your freedom back, give you your life back, and allow you to eat in a way that has both enjoyment but nourishment at the same time. But when you let um, or you know, start using some kind of diet, some kind of framework that has some layer of restriction in it, it's going to disrupt at least one or possibly all of these principles. It's going to disrupt how, you know, how well or how um, properly, um, how attentive you are to fueling your body. It's most likely almost any case of dieting, it's going to actually have, um, it's going to impact your nourishment because so much of the time, diets are focused on weight loss and you can create weight loss by eating literally Twinkies all day if you wanted to. That's a very extreme example. There was at one point like a, a literal cookie diet that was out there. I don't think that's out there anymore, at least I hope it's not. But you can create weight loss through a lot of different behaviors or by eating food that has no nutritional value. Um, so it, it takes the focus off actual health and nourishment, which is kind of the whole point. Um, and it just takes it to what can we do no matter what it is to just create the weight loss to make the weight come off. And then lastly, the satisfaction factor is pretty much always disrupted no matter what. Now, food is fuel, and we're gonna talk about this more in a minute, but it is not just fuel. If, if it were just simply fuel, by this point in time, in 2023, with all of the technology we would have available to us, we would probably have completely eliminated eating. I think of the example in like um, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory um, where he creates the gum that's like a chewing gum meal and he's like, this is going to get rid of grocery shopping. It's gonna get rid of having to cook. It's gonna make life so much easier. Truly, I believe that if, if food were just fuel, we would have come up with something like that by now. We would have come up with something that would nourish your body and you wouldn't have to stop, you wouldn't have to cook, you wouldn't have to grocery shop. Like we would have figured that out by now, but Food is fuel, but it is so much more than fuel. Fuel, or food, I'm sorry, is such a cornerstone of every culture. It is celebratory, it is satisfying. It adds so, or really brings, um, some people reject it, but it can bring so much joy and so much just like, just a whole nother layer to life of like literal flavor to life. And like I said, if, if it were, if it were not that, if, if it didn't offer that, if it didn't provide that for people, we would have done away with it by now. We would have figured out a much faster, more efficient, easier way with no cleanup and no dishes and no grocery shopping. We would have figured it out by now, honestly, but we haven't. And that is because food is, is fuel, but it is not just fuel. It provides so much more on top of that. 
Okay, so let's dive into the actual food is fuel piece of it because this was, um, I would say, majority of each of these conversations I had. This was the driver. This was the biggest um, part that people struggled with that people didn't quite understand. And this is a very common, um, misconception's not the right word, but a very common thing for people to just be uneducated on, completely unaware of because you were never taught it. Um, I'm a firm believer that I feel like every high school should have a nutrition course, not to be like, this is bad and this is good and avoid this and eat that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, let's talk about biology. Let's talk about how carbohydrates and proteins and fats and all the nutrients interact with your body so that you actually know how to eat. But alas, people aren't taught this so they don't necessarily know. So principle one, you're, you have a biological need for fuel. And when I refer to fuel, I'm mainly referring to macronutrients. So your macronutrients are your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats. So in order for your body to create energy, in this case, it's called ATP. That is like your cellular form of energy that your body uses to carry out everything it needs to carry out. In order to make ATP, you can actually make it from carbs, you can make it from protein, you can also make it from fat. So you can use any of those macronutrients to make the energy that your body needs. However, they're not all the same process. So to take carbohydrates and turn them into ATP, it is the shortest, most efficient process, okay? Um, and then you can use protein and fat, but they are a longer process. You use something called, so glycolysis is what your body, the process your body goes through to make, um, to take glucose, which is the smallest form of carbohydrates, and turn it into ATP. Gluconeogenesis is where you take fat or protein and you go through a much longer process, a lot of conversions, but eventually you end up with ATP. Now, your body is wired for survival. This is a very important thing to understand and I think most people literally do not, this doesn't even cross their mind, um, but your body is wired for survival and it wants to do, um, It wants. it's like all about self-preservation. So it is going to want to do the most efficient thing possible. So of course you want to be eating carbohydrates to fuel your body. Now there's all different kinds of carbohydrates. There's a whole quality discussion of food that we're going to get to when we talk about the next principle, which is nutrients. Um, but at a baseline, your body wants carbohydrates. Now, what happens when you don't eat carbohydrates? So maybe um, you are a super busy mom and you don't really like breakfast, so you just drink coffee all morning and then you eventually like eat lunch. Um, maybe it's because you're super busy. Maybe it's because you're trying intermittent fasting. Um, or another example, maybe you don't relate to that. Maybe you are on like the carnivore diet and you're eating like almost all meat. And again, I'm not knocking it, um, but let's just say in this example of the person I talked to, that was what they were doing. And they pretty much like didn't really eat much at all in the morning. Um, and then, you know, they do their whole carnivore thing. And then at nighttime, they were starving. Or um, when they went out to dinner, one of the nights that we were there, they completely gorged themselves to the point of feeling sick on the delicious rolls that were on the table. And they were, were, they were really good, I had some. <laughs> but here's, no matter, what avenue you take to the restriction of carbs, whether it's on purpose because the diet told you to, or whether it's strictly out of convenience or you know because you're trying to fast or whatever. What happens when you don't eat carbohydrates? Two big things. So one, your body is going to make you crave carbohydrates. It's going to make you a lot more aware of carbohydrates. And that is because it's trying to survive and it would much rather not tap into its own stores of fat and protein. We're gonna to get to this in a sec. Um, because it takes a lot longer. It takes even more energy to make energy out of those substrates. So it's just going to try and persuade you to like, hey, we need to eat some carbs. We need to like bring in the glucose so we can like get some energy going because we're a little low here. There is actually something called neuropeptide Y that is released in your brain in, in times of really more so when you are like restricting food in general, you're not eating enough in general. And when you are under eating, especially chronically under eating, whether that's coming from like periods of fasting and you're under eating within those periods or you're just under eating in general, you are going to have a release of this norepeptide Y and that is going to make you literally crave carbohydrates. So when you are like on a diet or you're fasting or whatever it is, there's some kind of restriction happening, 
you and you start craving like oh bread sounds so good <gasps> pasta oh my god chocolate like that is not like your weak willpower okay that is such a lie that is quite literally your body trying to survive it is your brain releasing the chemical that it is designed to release in order to like try and properly fuel itself okay so you're going to want carbohydrates so that's the first thing that happens the second thing that's going to happen is your blood sugar is going to dip. So your body has to have a certain amount of blood, or I'm sorry, a certain amount of sugar in your bloodstream between like 70 and 110 milligrams per deciliter is like the sweet spot. And if you dip below that, you're going to get those same kind of warning signals sent from your brain. Like we're low on sugar, we need to bring in carbohydrates. So whether you, um, so let's just say you went through a big period of fasting or you're just under eating in general for whatever reason, um, you are going to end up with low blood sugar and that again is going to make you crave carbohydrates because your body is trying to bring up that sugar level. Now what usually what happens is you are craving bread, you're like simple, like white bread you want pasta you want candy you want all of like the very simple carbohydrate type foods because that is what's going to break down the quickest and it's going to give your body the glucose it wants the fastest now this is actually not the best way to fuel your body because what happens is you essentially so let's just say you're like starving or maybe you under ate all you under ate all day and you get home and you are ravenous and you go to your favorite Italian takeout and you just like wolf down like some pasta with Alfredo sauce or whatever. So you're gonna get this huge influx of um, carbohydrates to your system. Alfredo sauce does have some fat, but it's mostly like a plate, a big giant like takeout container of pasta. So big influx of simple, simple carbohydrates into your uh, bloodstream. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna break down really fast. So you're gonna get this big spike of blood sugar, which is what your body's looking for. But ideally we would have a more gradual spike because what happens is when you get this big spike of blood sugar, you end up having a reactionary big spike of insulin, which is what actually transports the glucose from your blood to your cells where it's gonna be used to make energy. So this is all part of the process. However, when you get this big giant spike very quickly, it we've gone from alarm bells to bring in the carbs to now alarm bells to get the carbs out of the blood. So now we have so much insulin like flying out of our pancreas and that is going to get lots of that sugar like quickly into our cells. And a lot of times we end up with too much insulin because it's just like, shoot out the insulin, go, 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 go. Like we've got too much sugar in the blood, run, run. And then, so we have too much insulin. So then rapidly, so we've gone from lots of sugar and now we have lots of insulin and we've rapidly, we're gonna go back down. So then you can dip again. So when you dip again, even though you might literally have the pasta, like it, like you're still digesting it and you're not even hungry, you are all of a sudden gonna be like craving something really sweet. You're gonna to want to bring in carbohydrates again because your body is now doing the same repeated situation. Now, does this mean that you should never eat simple carbs and sugar is bad and white flour is bad? Absolutely not. I eat all of those things. I would consider myself a very healthy individual. Do I eat them in moderation? Yes. Um, but also what's even more important than the moderation piece is what are you eating with the simple carbs? Are you just eating like a big giant roll for a snack and like calling it a day? Like, no, that's probably not the best way to fuel our body. When you're eating carbohydrates, the most ideal situation is to pair them with fat, pair them with protein and pair them with fiber. Now, if you're eating real whole food, this is going to happen pretty naturally on its own, okay? Does every single time you have to eat carbohydrates, do you have to pair them with all of three, the, all three of these things? No, okay, your body can handle it. But if you wanna fuel yourself and feel good majority of the time, the majority of the time you're gonna to wanna to eat this way. When there is protein and there is fat and there is fiber in the mix, it basically slows down because it literally blocks um, it's, it acts as like a buffer or they, they act as a buffer and they kind of block um, like the, for example amylase one of the enzymes that breaks down carbohydrates it quite literally just can't get to it as quickly um, it's not going to digest it as quickly and therefore you're going to end up with this more gradual flow of sugar into your bloodstream so you're going to get a more steady rise 
and we're gonna have a much more controlled insulin response and then you're gonna end up with a steady dip now this is when you feel energized this is when you feel satisfied this is when you feel just content um, versus when we're doing these spikes that's where we feel groggy and lethargic um, and you know craving all the sweets okay so that's principle number one your body bottom line needs fuel carbohydrates are not bad but when we pair them with protein and fat and fiber that is going to um, provide the carbohydrates that our bodies want and literally depend on um, in the best way possible, most ideal way possible. Is it gonna happen every time? No, and that's okay. Um, but we do want to try and um, shoot for that. And again, when you're eating whole real food, like if you're eating whole grain something, it's going to have protein, it's going to have a little tiny bit of fat, it's going to have fiber already packaged in it. Fruit, very high in sugar, also very high in fiber. It's naturally packaged to not send us with crazy blood sugar spikes. The last thing, I feel like I really should have made this into like three videos because it's gonna be so long. But the last thing I wanted to mention, when you are in these periods of fasting um, or under eating or again, whatever is leading you to this point, um, you're also going to turn inward and you're going to start using your own protein and fat stores for fuel. Now you're probably like, woo, burning fat, yay, that's what I want. Who doesn't want to burn fat? Everybody wants to burn fat, like I get it, but, but, when the carbohydrates are too low, we're not bringing in enough, and we then turn inward to our own stores because your body is not just gonna like stop making ATP. If your body stops making ATP, you're going to literally die. Like that is how your cells survive and thrive. So you have to make energy. So if you are not doing, if you're not bringing in the carbohydrates, it's going to use its own stores. It's going to burn fat, which I'm sure everyone's pumped about. However, at the same time, simultaneously, there's no real way to shunt it one way or the other. Your body just goes into general catabolism mode and you're going to take protein from your muscles in order to send it through gluconeogenesis and to make energy, okay? So you're gonna burn fat too, which I'm sure is your motivation um, to under eating or trying to lose weight or whatever, um, but you're going to eat up your own muscle stores too. Now, your muscle stores are, I mean, your muscle's super important. It literally holds up your skeleton. Like we do not wanna be dipping into our own muscle stores if we can help it. Um, but also lean mass muscle mass is the biggest driver of metabolism so if your goal is to lose weight and you go on a restrictive diet and all of a sudden the pounds are just sliding off guess what a lot of those pounds are your muscle okay and you don't want to lose your muscle because it's important to have but also that is driving your metabolism. So your metabolism is literally going to be lowered after your restrictive diet that made you lose X amount of pounds and you're all excited. But guess what? When that diet eventually comes to an end, when the goal is reached and now you've got this like body that you were after or whatever it is that you're after, I'm not, not knocking wanting to do that because it's just so part of our culture and it's not your fault but you don't understand biology when you're doing that because you end up with a lower metabolism on the back end. So when you eventually like give up on the carnivore or the keto or whatever else it is, when that stops, because it probably will, you are gonna go probably back to what you were eating before because you never really established new healthy habits. You were just following a prescriptive diet you are probably going to gain all that weight back and possibly even more. This is what we see in like actually long-term weight loss studies. The weight comes off and then it comes back on like with a vengeance. That's because you literally stunted your own metabolism in your effort to try and be healthier. And again, this is not necessarily your fault because no one has taught this. It's all so misdirected. Um, so you don't want to be under eating. You don't necessarily want to be going out through these long periods of fasting. I know everybody loves fasting, but you are breaking down your muscles when you're doing that. Please know that that is happening. And it doesn't matter if you eat like protein out the wazoo. Again, this is just part of the process. This is what your body does when it is low on carbohydrates. Okay, we're gonna move on now. I feel like I've talked that um, to death. So 
Next up, I wanna talk about the actual demand for nutrients. So your body needs nutrients, your body runs on nutrients. It needs all of them. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, iron, mag manganese, like literally all of them, magnesium, sodium, like it needs, it needs all of them because they are a key part in many, many, many different processes in the body. So for example, you know, in order to convert something to, you know, something else, and let's say like glycolysis, like you might li quite literally need a nutrient to start that reaction. So when you are not bringing in enough, um, you know, nutrition, you're not bringing in nourishment, all of these processes that are supposed to happen are gonna start misfiring, they're gonna stop, um, actually like stop, those reactions are going to stop, or they're just not gonna be going at like their, um, the potential that they could be. And that is not healthy. You need nutrients, you need nutrition to bring in, or I'm sorry, to literally like fuel all these like micro processes in your body. So maybe you just, chronically under eat because you're just like, you know, again, busy mom, lots of coffee. Um, you know, you're just not super focused on like fueling yourself and you just like get through the day or you are on some kind, you're tr trying out some kind of like restrictive diet because you, maybe you just want to feel better, right? Okay. Or maybe you were like actually trying to actively lose weight or whatever it is. But when you go on some kind of restriction, whether it's like planned or unplanned, nutrition is pretty much always sacrificed because you know you have to bring in a decent amount of food to meet your energy needs and you can be bringing in a, some like a, you know a, an adequate level of food but is that food even nourishing is the question especially when it comes to weight loss almost all of the time the nutrition gets sacrificed however in there is what like, one instance where weight loss may come about by someone actually just genuinely focusing on healthy healthier behaviors like actually fueling their body paying attention to hunger and fullness and understanding how to eat carbohydrates and protein and fat to like optimally fuel their body um they're bringing in lots of nourishing foods. They're actually focused on nutrition, um, and they're you know addressing maybe some like under eating and overeating issues they may have. And because they're like actually focusing on health, in some cases, some people hold on to weight. Um, if they're chronically under eating, your body's going to hold on to that weight because it wants to hold on to every last reserve it can in case they need it. Because if we're always under eating, you're probably going to need it. But for whatever reason, this sometimes it does happen where weight loss comes about from these like genuine um, health changes. But most of the time, weight loss is brought about through restriction, um, through cutting certain things out, um, and it's very intentional. And the focus is on the weight loss. And again, nutrition often gets sacrificed. So there's just kind of this whole other layer of what are we actually eating? You can get protein and fat and fiber and um, carbohydrates from pretty nutrient poor foods. Do you have to eat perfect all of the time? Absolutely not. Like I said earlier, like give me some refined flour for some sourdough and I love a good chocolate chip cookie. Like I'm not cutting that stuff out. But if I ate that, those things every day, I would start to like see the impacts of that. I would feel sluggish. My di digestion would be off. Like you can't be eating those things all the time to properly fuel your body, but can you handle some of it? Absolutely. One of the things that came up in one of these conversations was uh, this person said, you know, actually a slice of pizza is like an excellent meal because it's got protein, it's got fat, it's got um, carbohydrates, it even has like, you know, a little bit of vegetables with pizza sauce. And I'm like, yes, from a, from a macronutrient standpoint, especially if it's like a whole wheat crust with a little fiber, like we've checked all the boxes, but it's also more than that. Like I, I see, I see where we're going there with that, but that doesn't, offer a ton of nutrition um, beyond macronutrients. Like we're not, we're not bringing in a ton of micronutrients with that, which we really do need and depend on. So again, if we're living off of pizza for dinner every night, we're going to have nutrient gaps. We have to be bringing in a lot of different food, um, fruits and vegetables and whole grains and like like high quality proteins, like, you know, high quality dairy, um, raw, if, that, if you're cool with that, um, high quality meats, like from farmers or from, you know, the best that you can afford at the grocery store. 
these are all, and even organ meats, like eat the organ meats. They're the most nutrient dense thing you can. If you can, if you can stomach those, I'm still, I'm not quite there yet, but, um, but I do love my liver capsules. But anyway, like how much nutrition are we bringing in? Because yes, we need to fuel. We have that biological need for fuel coming from macronutrients, but there's also this micro level of fuel that we need to nourish ourselves, to allow all those processes to run as they, as they need to run. And we have to be bringing in, you know, all of those micronutrients through food as well and if we're not doing that then we are again we're sacrificing one of those principles we're missing one huge piece of that puzzle and then finally the last principle is the satisfaction factor like I said earlier in this video we would have figured it out by now if we didn't need if, if that was not like a human need enjoying food um, the the taste the mouthfeel, the experience, the flavors, like if that was not necessary, we, we would have just done away with it at this point in time. Um, because it does take a lot more time and it does take a lot more effort and sitting down as a family or with friends or whoever for a meal um, is a much bigger deal than literally just like drinking a protein shake with like, my, with like a multivitamin in it. You know what I mean? Like it's a very, like we can get the nutrition technically that way, we can get the food in that way, but what's more enjoyable, slogging down a protein shake or sitting and breaking bread with your family? So much of the time, the satisfaction factor gets jeopardized or maybe even rejected altogether and often not even on purpose. But when someone is on a restricted diet, take my friend trying the carnivore diet, um, he had a lot of stress that he didn't even really realize until we had this conversation. And you know, I explained to him, I said, you know, life is so much more, like I understand that you are doing this to eat healthier. He explained to me what he was doing before and I'm like, I'm actually really happy you did this because I think it's it was like one of the only ways to uncover for you like how, like where you realize when you fuel your body how you feel totally different. Most people don't even have no clue they could feel so much better if they focused on nutrition and they focused on healthy food. They just have no idea. They're walking around feeling like a shell of themselves or like half of what they could be. They just don't even know. Like they literally don't know. And I don't think that he knew. He understand what he was doing was un unhealthy, but he didn't realize he could actually physically feel like a totally different person. Um, but like I said, he, he, you know, he did this and he made that realization and it was kind of like, okay, I think we're, I think we're done here. Like, I think we need to now open things up a bit more because now you've got that intrinsic motivation of, I want to actually feel good. And you're now running into all these roadblocks and these mental blocks, um, of like, this is good. This is bad. This is allowed. This is not, and that is not sustainable. Okay. So I was just kind of talking to him like, you like food is such a like food is truly such a joy of life and not only are you missing out on you know being able to go to dinner with friends and enjoy it and not literally feel sick because you like scarfed down the rolls because they were so delicious and you haven't had a carb since like nom and you're just like these are so good oh my god and then and then he was like i had the worst stomach ache. it literally it, he said it literally ruined his night so how can we go out to dinner, enjoy the friends, not feel sick from the rolls? Um, you know, like that is important. Like that will, that impacts you. So, and then the whole other piece of that is all of the stress that comes along with it. You know, he was explaining to me literally like the mental gymnastics that he would do in his head every day, all of the back and forth conversation of like, well, I'm not supposed to, like, it's not time yet. I'm not supposed to eat, but I'm really hungry. What should I do? Should I have a snack? I'm not supposed to have a snack. Like, and again, I don't even think he quite realized how um, much of a thing it was for him until I started kind of like talking to him. Um, so, and one thing I said to him was like, you can have the most perfect diet, like, nourishment 100% you're eating all the right things there is like no cheating there's no, like nothing you could have a perfect diet but if that perfect diet is causing you a lot of stress stress is incredibly toxic to the body so it's almost like what's the point of the perfect diet if we're going to also be like we're, the, the, we're going to be like impacted and our health is going to be impacted by the stress your nutrition does not have to be perfect I always say nutrition is a priority. It's not paramount. It's not everything because when it becomes everything, when we put nutrition on this pedestal, when we put this certain diet that someone told me is the right thing to do and I'm going to feel amazing and I do feel amazing, but 
when we put it so high that it becomes this huge deal, almost like an idol in our life, it's gonna create so much stress because that is not going to vibe with every other area of your life. You're going to like, it's going to butt up with family gatherings, going out to dinner with friends, um, you know, just like your morning routine when you're starving but you're not allowed to eat. Like it's, it's causing a lot of mental, it has a mental toll, it causes a lot of stress and stress on your body is not good. We want to avoid stress. We want to be able to manage our stress. We don't need extra stress from our diet. There's enough stressors in the world. Oh my God, have, like hello, being human is hard. But let's not make food the stressful thing. I want you to be able to enjoy food, okay? I want you to actually reap the satisfaction that food can bring. I want you to be able to go out into life and enjoy all of the scenarios that involve food and not be like in your head about it or literally having to skip things because they don't have food that fits your diet or spending the night in your hotel room sick to your stomach because you ate too many rolls because you haven't had one in like a million years. Like how do we, find that middle road where we really prioritize nutrition and we do eat healthy and we do fuel our bodies and we do cook at home as much as we can and and you know we're we're conscious of ingredients and all of that but how do we also you know allow for the balance and allow for the flex and not cut certain things out and not be dogmatic about it because none of that is sustainable um and the other piece is unsustainable too perfection isn't sustainable so i want you to find like, where do I, wh where is my middle road? That is like my challenge to you. Where do I feel my best physically because I'm actually nourishing myself, but not to the point where I'm inviting in more stress because I'm so focused on nourishing myself. Okay, you guys, I think that's it for me. I think I'm gonna sign off here. If you guys found this helpful, first off, comment down below. Let me know, oh, sorry, I just hit my dishwasher. Let me know. Um, what you found super helpful about this video because um, it's very valuable that feedback is very val valuable to me um, If you like like this kind of style like I got my coffee Let's like chat kind of video Let me know because I'm obviously really passionate about these topics This is what my whole course is is based on is helping people to like get out of their heads and also like understand nutrition and how do we like marry those two together. This is one of the biggest passions of my life is helping people in this way. And um, sometimes it just takes a little like conversation in real life to like respark that fire and realize, because I feel like I've talked about this so much, but when I have these conversations, I'm like, oh my God, nobody knows this. Like I gotta keep talking about this. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share it with somebody that you know that you think might benefit from it. Um, and that is all I have. Please subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. Let me know if you want to see more of these style videos talking about nutrition, getting into the nitty gritty, and if so, like what actual topics do you want me to speak on? Because um, that's very helpful for me to know. But that is all I have. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.